All right, let's do some tests. Can AMD's 5700G CPU act as the core of your streaming PC? Can it record clean 4K 60p footage while you stream? If so, this CPU could open up a ton of new options for dedicated streaming PCs. For instance, imagine not having to buy a dedicated GPU for hardware encoding, which would save you a big chunk of dollars right now. Or imagine building an ultra-tiny ITX streaming PC, since you don't need the single PCI slot on the ITX board for a GPU, you can use it for the capture card. I had a workaround for that in another video where you could add a capture card to an ITX board while still using a dedicated GPU. I'll put the link in the description, but it requires a pretty large case. Keep watching and you'll see the test results I compiled. They are surprisingly good, but there are some downsides to using this CPU for a streaming and capture PC. The system specs I'll have up on the screen. The key point here is that there's a Ryzen 7 5700G with 8 cores, 16 threads, and Vega 8 graphics built in. It's a low power system, so unlike a lot of Intel's 8 and 10 core CPUs that have integrated graphics, this is much lower energy consumption and has more powerful GPU in it. For every test, I'll run captured footage from that test so you can see how it looks, but I expect the YouTube compression to kill some of the quality, so it may not be a perfect representation. Also, I'll drop a couple of Twitch links to some clips that I streamed directly to Twitch, so you can watch them there and see what they look like. You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the player crying out in pain? I know you can! In the Elgato 4K capture utility, while doing nothing else on the system, software encoding at 60 frames per second was pretty iffy. I dropped a lot of frames, and you can see the CPU is not maxed out, but GPU usage is very high. I think that might have something to do with decoding and displaying HDR content, but I don't know for sure. One false move, and that happens. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. There are some. And it's more of the same. The 4K capture utility can only record 30 frames per second with the AMD hardware encoder. This is a limitation of the software, not the hardware. But I did notice some stutters and some weird flashes on the screen when I was using this hardware encoder instead of the software encoder. I didn't notice a bunch of dropped frames though. So, you know Tifa, right? It's not really my business, but are you guys close? The software encoder at 30 frames per second in Elgato software works great. I'm noticing smooth, clear, no dropped frames. CPU usage is lower than trying to record 60 frames per second. GPU usage is still very high. We need to hit it with magic. That should give us an opening. This is OBS recording 4K60 using the AMD hardware encoder. I've got the specs and everything up on the screen for how I encoded it and what settings I used. I just used the simple settings. You can see GPU usage is high, CPU usage is low. GPU usage is actually lower than the software encoder in Elgato software. And it's recording pretty smoothly, I'd say. Give it all you've got. So, no matter what I did, I, I overloaded the encoder or caused something to break. OBS wouldn't stop recording, and it didn't look like it would even start encoding. No matter what I did to split up the two encoders between the work, I could not get both to work at the same time properly. They always dropped frames or failed in some way that just wasn't acceptable. When I get my chance, I'm gonna blow this in OBS Streamlabs, I tried streaming and recording the stream at stream quality at the same time. This worked great. I got a solid recording of the stream 
and I didn't notice any drop frames or issues. Nothing was reported to me by Streamlabs OBS. So this works. This is something you can do with the CPU, definitely. And I probably could kick the uh, performance up quite a bit or the quality up. Maybe even turn up the quality on the recording separately. I haven't tried that though. I'm including this as kind of a baseline for high quality streaming. This is a Ryzen 9 5900X and RTX 3060 12 gigabyte system. The other specs are essentially the same because I just moved the solid state drive over and the capture card over. It can do this, it can do actually all of it at the same time and really not stress the system very hard. I'm recording in 4K 60 frames per second using the Elgato utility, streaming from OBS and recording the stream all at the same time. So my dreams have been kind of shattered. I really hoped that this could do everything all at once and it can't. But there are still use cases for it. For instance, if a tiny PC that can still capture using an internal capture card is perfect for your use case, then this might be a good way to go. There are just so many options when you start making compromises that it's hard to say that one is actually better than the other or this is a clear winner. And for my money, I would probably just put the capture card in my main desktop and haul it around. Maybe buy a more compact ATX, you know, desktop or, or even a micro ATX with two PCI Express 16X length slots. And then just carry it around with me and move it towards the TV when I want to capture something from a console. Because you end up getting a good editing PC, a good streaming PC, a good gaming PC, and a good dedicated streaming PC when it's used that way all at the same time and then you've just got one system so do whatever you want with this information I hope it was helpful and um, I hope that maybe it was entertaining too if it was great I am glad it was have a good day thank you for watching